Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Well, I don't have any makeup on, so it must be morning time. <laughs> um, it's that time for a chit chat video. Last time it was with cappuccino and um, my ham sandwiches. Well, actually last time I had turkey. This time I bought some fresh chopped ham. So I already drank it and ate it because I feel like if I do a video and try to eat and drink it, it goes crazy because my cappuccino actually gets cold and I don't really enjoy my sandwiches because I'm trying to talk at the same time. I've always kind of been that way where like I hate when people call me on the phone and I'm trying to eat because I felt like I ate and I didn't even enjoy it. I don't even remember what it tasted like. Last time when I chit chatted with you and it was like cappuccino time, it was not bad at all. You know, even though I really didn't enjoy the sandwiches because I was so excited about what I was talking about and all the plans that I have for the next few months. Um, but it's not your fault. I decided to try it. And, you know, I might can still do it, but it's not the best way to do it. Um, maybe I can do my cappuccino because I can drink and talk, drink and talk. Sandwiches are a little bit more busier and you have to focus more so if i do a chit chat video doing something like that it'll be just drinking my cappuccino even though i do risk it getting cold as well and not enjoying it completely as if i was just focused and serene i think you get me <laughs> but um hey i'm still gonna try it and see if i can find a method to it like you know sip it talk sip it talk and <laughs> i'll figure it out but anyway i already drank it and i ate my sandwiches and i just put it in the sink and got myself together a little bit more and came back and decided to do this video um i'm gonna be all over the place in the video i want to talk about a few things i just watched two episodes of the view i had to catch up usually i watch it every morning i have it ready on my dvr and then when I wake up and, you know, get my comfy spot on the couch and make my healthy smoothie, then I watch it and it's usually an hour or two after it's been on TV. Um, but this time I've had so much going on this week that I was two episodes behind. It was already recorded, but I had to go back and catch up on it. And I kind of want to talk about some things that they talked about. And um, there it is weird. And so one of on one of the topics was yesterday and they were talking about being over 40 that your life changes over 40 or that you really get to know who you are over 40 and that was interesting to me because I've always talked about stuff like that like um I enjoyed every decade that I lived in some definitely were more um better than others um some were I learned a lot more than others some I don't care to go back to not the whole decade but there were some decades that there were a lot of years kind of back to back that, you know, I don't care to relive really. But um, I think in my 20s, um, I, I wasn't mature in my 20s. I thought I was being as mature as possible. I was always an honest person, a fair person. Um, I tried to be a very responsible person, but I think I was my 20s I was really navigating through life and I thought I wanted certain things and then come to find out those those certain things weren't as pretty as I thought they were one of them being married I got married the first time um I had turned 18 in January um and graduated because I actually went to the state to graduate I because of um I went to probably one of the worst schools in Oakland I loved it um, because it was just my high school. And to me, it was the better option of the five or six high schools that we had. And all of my f childhood friends, we all went to that same high school. So it was my, my family, my friends, my memories, things that I love, ROTC, which is Reserves Officer Officers Training Corps, um, my track. Yeah, I used to run track, um, all my dance competition, girls drill team competition, all the stuff that I loved and was so into was there. And I was so proud of our high school. Yes, it was known as probably one of the worst, you know, and it had its bad things, but I still loved it because of all the memories that I had. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to graduate my last year because a lot of gang play was happening. We had a lot of gangs in East Oakland and um, there was a shooting one day and I ducked and 
missed it missed me and then it happened the second and it scared me to death and then it happened again you could kind of feel the the vibe of okay something's gonna happen you can see one gang kind of coming through and another coming and it they were just a rival against each other it wasn't really to you know they took a chance but i don't think they were really out to kill innocent people but they're taking a chance in a school full of students who have nothing to do with their rivalry so i think that's just part of the game plan, I guess, is what they feel. You know, it's about what they're fighting for. Um, and it happened a second time. It was almost at the end of lunch period. And I was going to my fourth period, which is Spanish class. And I was already always late for that class. I don't know why. I would call it the slip and slide class because all my stuff like ROTC and everything was on the whole opposite side of the school. And I wanted to be with my friends and talk and and, you know, do some ROTC stuff. And so when the bell rang, it was like, I'm booking it, booking it to try to go to the opposite side of the school and make it on time. And this teacher was like, if you're not in here by the time the bell rings, you can sit all you want, but it's like, you're not even there. He doesn't count you as there. You can't do the work that day. So you might as well just leave. Um, he was a good teacher, but that was just his philosophy is about being responsible, about being on time. And there were maybe a couple of times I was late. Other, other times I just slip and slide and barely made it. And he's like, he would just shake his head like, oh my God, you know. And that's where I was on my way to when, you know, you could feel the vibe and I barely, I could have been shot. And it the second time was so close, so scary to me. You know, what was going on, you know, every. You know, everybody's like, oh, my God, you know, there's this gang, there's that gang, you know, go away. And, you know, all the stuff that is involved with that. And I finally went to my fourth period class and I said, this is it. And he's like, what is it? And I'm like, this is my last day at school. I'm leaving school. He's like, you're quitting? I'm like, yes, because I might not have a life to continue being here. So one way or other, I'm leaving, and that's either on my own decision or they're going to make the decision for me because I'm not going to be alive to see the, to the end. So I'd rather leave, and I'm like, I would love to. It's I don't know why I'm getting emotional about it. I would love to graduate with my friends and cross the stage. That's what we worked so hard for, Right. All those years of school, and I knew it wasn't a possibility for me. So, you know, and I told my mom what was going on. And um, she understood. We had a heart-to-heart -heart talk. She believed me. That's one thing I love about my mom. She never doubted me. If I said, this is happening to me, this is how I feel, this is what I'm scared of, she always tried to help me, and she always supported me in how, whatever I wanted to do. And so, um, I did, I left and I went to the state and I took my GD and I remember we had this, it was a five part test. So we had a study and then the next day we take the test study and then we take the next part and I passed it. So I got my GD. Um, and so actually when I graduated from beauty college, it meant a lot to me. People just usually graduate and get their certificate, but I wanted it to be more than that because I really worked hard in beauty college. I had the natural talent for it because I always did it for myself and friends. So I had the natural talent for hair and makeup and beauty and all that and nails and stuff. But you still had to work really hard. People think beauty college, that's not real college. Of course it is. It is a college. <laughs> what are you talking about? Um... And so you have to study and test and it's not, you're just going to learn how to do hair and it's not that big of a deal. It is a big of a deal. You have to, one of our biggest tests, you have to know chemistry. You have to know anatomy. In fact, our anatomy test was a five part test and it was such a huge test and you had to get everything right from the, the way to spell the nerves and the bones and the functions to what. They served, what purpose they served and how they connected. And I remember being good at tests and always getting a hundred on each test in beauty college. I was that dedicated and that, you know, really doing the best I could. I was at the top of my class and I got all A's, but this test really scared me. Like one minute I remember everything. The next minute I would forget everything and I feel like I want to throw up and it was just hard. And we did that three rounds of the book. And I passed with the 100, but it was just so nerve-wracking. 
So I told my teacher when I graduate, I wanted to wear a cap and gown because I'm graduating. You know, I have completed my schooling. I'm going to get this award. And even though there's not a stage, I'm going to walk up to the front with my cap and gown, my cap and gown. And I did. I got me a cap and gown. I think there was two choices. People had borrowed me their cap and gown and I chose one and I'll put pictures up to show you that. In fact, I do have um, videos where I talk all about beauty college. I think it's in different parts and what it's all about, what I did, all this stuff. And I think I have pictures, so you have to go a little bit back. I think it's a year or two back if you want to check those videos out. Um, but yeah, and because I didn't get that chance in high school to wear a cap and gown and graduate, and I graduated with honors in beauty college. And so it meant the world to me. But um, I forgot what I was going to talk about before I got into this. But, oh, decades. So um, that was actually before my 20s. And then I always want, knew I wanted to be married and be a wife and a mother. That was really important to me. I was struggling between whether I wanted to be in the banking industry or nursing. And I took some classes at our youth center for nursing. I thought, yeah, that's what I really want to do. But then somehow, somewhere, something shifted. And I said, no, banking is what I really wanted to do because I love computers. I love working with money. I love helping people. I love that, you know, back then you dressed elegant. I think people still do, but it's a more relaxed atmosphere. I just love all of that. So I did. I went into banking. I was in banking for a total on and off for 20 years. Um, I worked for Bank of America. I worked for Wells Fargo. I worked for a savings and loan. And it was just an incredible experience. Um, it's not something I'm into now, um, but I'm glad I did it. I It was my passion for those years. And I really enjoyed it. I love getting dressed up, wearing the high heels, looking elegant, makeup, jewelry, you name it. Um, and then I married. I took my GED in January, be, turned 18 in January, got married that March, pregnant that May. And had my daughter the following January. So my life went really fast in my 18th year. I had tonsil surgery that year. It was a horrible surgery. Um, I had a car accident that year. In fact, I, I had a settlement. I got my money two days before my wedding. So it's kind of helpful for the honeymoon. But I was really hurt. So I didn't like that part. I was just really navigating. Leaving my mom who I was so close to. And even though we lived downstairs because she owned a duplex you know, we eventually moved away for like 20 minutes away from Oakland to San Pablo. So, um, and then it ended up being a very abusive, abusive marriage from physically, mentally, emotionally, you name it. We ended up having a daughter. Um, I was done within three years because it felt like 30 from all the abuse. And so I just found my way, you know, at 21, I had suffered, um, like a stroke, um, I had suffered a cardiac arrest and a stroke um, from all the abuse and stuff. And so being 21, already separating on my way to divorce is not what I envisioned my life to be. Going through all those health issues because of the stress and the abuse and and stuff like that was just like not what I envisioned my life to be. And, and here I am young and not mature enough yet, you know, being a good person, honest person, responsible person. But still, if I knew then what I know now and I was a person I am now then, I think life would have been completely better, completely different. But then to re to change any one thing means to change a lot of good that happened. And so it can't work that way. Um so I felt like in my 20s, I was navigating through life and going through so much and so many changes, so so many tragic and drastic changes that I was like, and then, you know, by 24, I met my second husband, who I'm still married to. We've been together 28 years, married for 25. So I regained my peace. I regained my happiness. I had my baby, Adriana which she brought the joy and the life back into me. And I was so happy and proud to show everybody, look, I've been through so much. 
But look, my life has changed. God didn't forget me. He has blessed me. He has given me another chance at happiness. And so I ran with that. And here I am 28 years later. And I've had two more children. Um, Five years later, um, at 29, I had my son, Alexis. 31, I had my youngest and my last daughter, Carolina. And here we are, 28 years together. So yeah. I found myself, like I said, navigating suffering so much and yet at the end, regaining my happiness. My 30s, I felt like I was a little bit mature, like I reached another level. Um, I had different wants in life. Um, again, there were some tragedy. I lost my mom in my 30s. Um, in fact, I think I was 32 when I lost my mom. Um, my baby was just a month old. Um, so it was like I was given this beautiful life and yet a beautiful life was taken from me and my world crumbled. I attempted suicide like three times. I really had to go to the priest and say, I want to be with my mom, but I have children that I love and that I need to be here for, but I don't feel like I should be happy or I can be happy. I need like my mom's permission. Um, I can't get out of this morning, I, this morning, like morning, not morning, but like when you're mourning a loss, I can't get out of this rut. I can't focus. I'm dying inside. She was my best friend. She had the perfect word, the perfect advice, just everything to me. And I don't have that anymore. And, you know, between my daughter telling me, you know, I know you love your mom and you miss her and I miss grandma so much, but you're my mom and we need you too. And when grandma want you to be here for us, I mean, just a little girl, she was only eight, not even eight, seven and a half when my mom passed away. And just so much heart and knowledge. And that woke me up. And then the priest telling me, you know, if you really want to be with your mom, this is not the way to go because killing yourself is a sin. You know, you have to respect when God says it's time, it's your time. You don't make that decision. God makes that decision. And your mother wouldn't want you to make that decision. If she could be here, wouldn't she like smack you upside the head? Like, what are you talking about? These kids need you. I probably felt like giving up many times, but I stayed to raise you into the end. And, you know, she was there on your wedding day and she was there when you graduated and she was there in those special moments of life. And you shouldn't cheat your children out of those opportunities. And he woke me up, especially when he said, this is not the way to go. If your intention is to see your mom, you have to do it when God says so. And she'll be waiting with you for open arms. But if you decide when it's time, you'll never see your mom. And I know different religions believe different stuff, but Catholic is my religion. That's what we believe. And between those two things, it woke me up. I still cry a lot for my mom. I still miss my mom dearly. I feel like it was just yesterday. Mother's Day is coming up. So it's always bittersweet for me. It's so bitter and sad because I don't have her and I wish I could give her flowers and say happy Mother's Day and be with her. Oh, this... But it's also sweet because I have my children. I'm blessed to have amazing, amazing children who are respectful, loving, giving, fun, who spending time with me is not a chore. There is a desire of them. We're like best friends and mom and daughter at the same time. And I know they say you shouldn't be best friends with your children, but when you have respectful loving, grateful, giving children like I have that I'm truly blessed to have because this generation is really tough. What kids have to go through and then the re a lot of disrespect and just ungratefulness, you know, and technology taking over, which technology is an amazing thing. And, you know, we should be thankful to have it because we've come so far and we could do so much and it's even been a protecting force. But you have to know the boundaries of it. You have to know the respect and be grateful for it. But at the same time, it doesn't damage a family or pull away time from your family. So all of that. And my kids are just so well balanced. I'm really blessed. I'm blessed to be their mom. I'm blessed that they're my children that, you know, all this kind of stuff. So uh, I forgot where I was talking about so many emotional things. Yeah. So it's always been a bittersweet time for me. You know, because it's sweet because they come and they want to be with me and they spend the whole day with me and they do everything they can for me, whether it's my husband making dinner and them eating dinner with me, um, gifts from their heart or just saying, I love you, happy Mother's Day, teddy bears, what have you. It's just an exciting, 
sweet day. I always have an amazing, amazing Mother Day. It's so much fun. But there's a part of me that's like, I don't have that mom. For her to be a part of it with us and for me to honor her and save her. So the way I have to honor her is going to her grave or just making her part of it, whether it's lighting a candle at the altar that I have for her or, you know, cooking her favorite foods or doing something in her memory. Um, you know, we decorate the art, the altar. We put flowers on there for Mother's Day. We give her a little gift for Mother's Day. So we make her part of us in spirit. Um, most years I get to go to the graveyard. There's been one or one or two somewhere there every so often I can't make it not even like close to Mother's Day I mean within that month or the month before I'll make it of course not months go by I try to make it especially before not after after it's too late for me um, I would love to be there on Mother's Day but we can't do that every year I mean I have to be here and I have to be at home and enjoy my family and my children and things that we do here. We can't just get up and go. And then it's a crazy day. Everybody's traveling. A lot of crazy people on the road. A lot of, you know, it's just a, a really scary time to be traveling on the road. So we tried to do it before and I like to do it as close as possible. And this year I'm going to get to do that. Um, we're leaving out of town tomorrow, which is Thursday, to go see Angela Johnson, which I'm so excited about. My daughter got me the tickets for my birthday, and I've waited this whole time because my birthday's in January. Um, and then we're staying overnight just to relax and chill and have some fun. And the next day, we're going to go to my mother's grave. We're going to clean her grave like we always do every time we go um, because of the weather and because of just dust air it gets really dirty so we take our products and our towels and water bottles and everything in there those are water faucet there we clean our grave we shine it up we put flowers and mementos like well we're gonna put um which my daughter got for her it's red white it's like fake flowers but it's like a bouquet and it's red white and blue for the puerto rican flag colors and so we're going to put, and it already comes in the vase. So we're going to, and there's two holes where you could put vases. So we're going to put that. And then on the other side, I'll put some fresh real flowers. And then she'll have her Mother's Day card and we'll put Mother's Day mementos, gifts and stuff. And we'll spend some time with her there before we head on back. And that'll be our Mother's Day together. And then, um, yeah, so... I can't wait to be with my daughters. We'll get to spend time with my nephew over there. Um, so this Mother's Day, it's really weird because I'm actually so excited. I can't wait to Mother's Day. I have a feeling it's going to be fun. It's going to be nice. Um, just being with my husband and my kids and then having the relaxation that I um, went to the Bay Area a couple of days before and then I was able to celebrate with my mom and spend time at her grave and we'll play her little music, probably Mother's Day music. Um, so I'll get to have the best of both worlds so it won't make me as sad as normal times when I can't go as close to the day where I have to go like in April because I know I probably won't be able to come back and that's okay because I was able to to go ahead of time and celebrate, but I like it to be as close as possible. And I know it's hard to be there on the day, but I like to be there as close as possible. So I'll do pictures in whatever video I can of that of course of the Angela Johnson event, um, everything that we're doing. But anyway, I felt like in my thirties, I had, um, my a beautiful life, which is my daughter, my last daughter that I had. I mean, I could still have more children to this day. I am, I have been tested for menopause. I have, they said, absolutely not. You must stay protective there. You're not even close to menopause. You can have kids very much so at, at still for at least the next few years. And I'm 52. So I was really shocked, but it kind of runs in the family, I guess, at least with my mother, cause she had me at 46. So I wasn't surprised, but yet I was surprised cause I thought, okay, 46 to 52 is some years. It's some six years. I should be in menopause, but nope. So I do have to be on protection. It's probably TMI, but, um, yes, yeah, so I felt like thirties. I was just like still navigating through life. I reached another level of maturity. Um, 
I knew what I wanted, but I felt like um, I still had so much more to learn and to go. And I, you know, like I said, I was given a beautiful life, but then within a month, I lost a beautiful life. And having year, years of mourning to try to navigate the new changes in my life. Um, I had some health issues where I had breast, oh God forbid, um, a breast infection with my daughter ended up hospital for a week. Um, and then, um, what else happened in my thirties? I graduated from beauty college in 2001. Um, so that was a great accomplishment. I took my state board. I got my license. Um, so I was navigating the salon life. And then I ended up, it, salon life ended up taking a toll on me. So I ended up having five surgeries within two years, which is my neck, my shoulders, my wrist. Um, I have a titanium plate in my neck. Um, so I couldn't do full service salon life anymore. So I just do it for my family and friends. I have all the stuff, um, as you can see there, see that pink thing is, um, my makeup artist training case and it has stuff for hair and makeup. So it's like a rollout case. So I could go to people's houses and do their hair or makeup, or they could come here. Um, so yeah. And if you look over there in the middle, see there's mirrors there we are. and there's my autism plaque. Let me point there. Uh, Right below the autism plaque, you see that gold, I'm trying to keep the finger pointed, that gold frame, that's my beauty college graduation diploma. And then in the drawer, I actually have my license because I'm looking for a specific frame. But, um, yes, <laughs> I'm going to blow my nose. I'm back. <laughs> anyway, so I had reached a new level of maturity and I had some life given, life taken, and some opportunities where I was graduated from beauty college, did that, then ended up having surgery. So it went down. Um, but I'm thankful that I still have my license and I still do what I love, um, which is makeup and hair, um, and navigating through life. And then, um, having some, um, 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 you know, marriage, we've been together for 28 years, married for 25. Um, it's been, an amazing, beautiful ride. Um, we're still in love probably even more than ever before. Um, we still, um, have so much respect and communication and we're, you know, going through this life of marriage where we have, we want the same things. Our children are our world. Um, but we have made mistakes in our marriage and sometimes we thought we saw the end. <sighs> coming and somehow that love that we did have for each other, um, that we were able to recuperate any mistakes, any losses. And we were able to take that strong bond and love that we had for each other and say, Hey, this was a mistake. Um, this, you know, but we love each other. We have these children and our love is strong and that's, what's going to keep us going. And we're going to fight back and we're going to get up and we're going to move forward. So, and then you have those happy years and then you go back and you have a, a down year or so, and then you have to fight for your marriage again. And that's how marriage, everybody's marriage is like that. Anybody who says they have a perfect marriage is so full of BS. <laughs> um, it's a work in progress. I mean, and it, and it takes you having a strong bond. It takes you having a deep love. It takes you ha um, having in your savings the respect to wake up and say, oh, no, this takes respect. This takes communication. It's having a commitment for life that you have to remember. You know, we made this commitment and we're still want to honor that. And we desire that because you have to have the desire. If you lost all the desire then none of that works. So you just have to snap out of it and say, hey, okay, what do we need to do to fight for our love, to fight for our marriage, to fight for our children? And so, like I say, you have ha many happy years and then you have that one stuck moment, then you go back and have many. And so you just have to be prayerful and you have to just like, having God in your life is very, very important. Um, so yeah, so as long as you have God in you make God your first priority within your family, within your marriage. You're going to church. Um, you know what God feels about marriage and what you need to do 
to survive. I think I'm going to do a part two of this chit chat because I don't want it to go over 30 second, 30 minutes and it's at 29.55. So let me go ahead and go to part two, um, but we'll be right back. <laughs> 